Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're creating this sort of pendant style pattern in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to start with a brand new file. I'm making my 1920 by 1080, which is screen size. Yours can be any size that you like. I'm selecting the rectangle tool, setting the color to the fill color to black and removing the stroke. I'm going to drag out a long narrow rectangle. And then I'm going to choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Zigzag. I'll set this to Smooth and I'm going to set the ridges per segment to 5. What happens with this is that unlike a line, if you use this on a rectangle, then you get these really interesting effects when you increase the size of the shape. So I'm just going to increase the size and just look at what it is that I want here. You can see if I set the ridges per segment to an even number, it becomes a zigzag line. To an odd number, it looks different again. So this is the look that I want for this line. So I'm just going to click OK. Now this is a rectangle that has an appearance applied to it, so I'm going to choose Object Expand Appearance. So now we have this as a shape. With the shape selected, I'm going to the Shape Builder tool, which shares a toolbar position with the Live Paint Bucket tool. If I hold down the Alt key option on a Mac, I can just remove the pieces I don't want. So I don't want any of this, I just want these two pieces. I'm going to click away from the shape. I'm going to change color at this stage because I just want to see what I'm doing here. I'm going to drag out a rectangle because right now what I'm interested in is using the rectangle to cut this shape off here so that I just get this little piece. So again, I'm going to select everything again back to the Shape Builder tool. Again, hold down the Alt key on a PC option on a Mac and just remove the bit that I don't want. We'll have a look in the Layers palette to see what it is that we've got here. So I have this shape and the little tail is a separate shape. So I'm going to select the tail and I'm going to duplicate and reflect it. To do this, I choose Object Transform and then Reflect. I'm reflecting over the vertical and because I want the original and a duplicate, I'm going to click Copy. I'm also going to move this as I do it, so I'm just arrowing it across. Let's zoom in so we can see this area here. These two shapes are not perfectly lined up. So let's just unperfectly line them up a bit more. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I'm going to select over both these shapes, not this shape here. I'm going to reselect this shape, the bit that I don't want to move. You can see it's placed really nicely here. I want to move this one, but not this one. I'm going to the Align panel with Window and then Align. And what I'm going to do here is with this selected, with the darker selection area around it, make sure that this says align to key object. A key object is something that won't move. So out of these two selected shapes, this one won't move, this one will. When you have selected align to key object, you can use the distribute spacing options. I'm going to click this one, which is horizontal distribute space. Now, if I click away, these two shapes are perfectly lined up. If I select over them, I can go back to the Shape Builder tool, drag across them to just join them up together. So now I have my two shapes. I'm going to select over them and I'm going to rotate them around. If I hold the Shift key as I do that, they're going to rotate in steps of 45 degrees. So I end up with a 90 degree rotation. At this point, I'm going to recolor this and I'm going to find a color scheme to use. So I'm going to the swatches panel here. You can get to yours by choosing window and then swatches. I'm going to libraries. I'm going to foods. I'm going to vegetables. And I kind of like this collection of colors. So I'm going to add it to my swatches panel with my shape selected and fill selected here. I'm just going to select a color for them. I'm going to add a circle into this area here. So let's just go in and select the ellipse tool, drag out a circle by holding the shift key as I do that and fill it with a different color. Now again, I want to line this up so it's centered, but I don't want to move this sort of rectangly thing. I just want to move the circle. So I'm going to select both shapes and then click again 
on the larger shape so that won't move. Going back to the align panel, I'm going to make sure I have align to key object selected. So the key object is now marked out and it will not move. And now I'm going to click on the horizontal and vertical align center options that centers this shape inside this one without moving the larger of the two. Now I want to create the sort of nested shapes and we're going to do that with a tool called Offset Path. So I'm going to select just this shape. I'm going to choose Object and then Path and then Offset Path. Now mine's already preset. The default is 10, so that's actually enlarge the path by 10 pixels. I'm setting mine to negative 20. And so that's going to shrink the path by 20 pixels. And what's going to happen when I click OK is I'm going to get this piece as a separate new shape. So I'll just click OK. And I'm going to recolor it. So let's go and select the color for it. And then let's repeat that with object path and then offset path. The minus 20 is sticky. So whatever value you used previously is going to be still there. So you'll just click OK and recolor that to a different color. And let's do that once more. So we're ready to create our pattern, select over both these shapes and choose object and then pattern and then make. In the pattern options dialog, I'm going to increase the number of pattern elements I'm seeing to nine by nine. That doesn't affect the pattern at all. It just fills up the screen a bit better for me to see what's going on. I'll choose from the tile type brick by column as that gives me this nice sort of offset appearance. Now I'm really concerned here that the width and height are not whole numbers. So I'm going to make sure that this icon looks like this and I'm going to increase the width at least by one pixel so that it nearly one pixel so that it's a whole number. Now if you want these pieces to be wider separated, then you can increase the width even further. I'm happy with them not being too separated, but I do want this to be a whole number. Now with height, I need to work out what's going on here. So I'm going to zoom in. This is not a whole number, so I'm just going to take it a little bit larger and a little bit larger again. So I'm just going to work out where the pattern breaks. And I think I've got a good value here for it, and it is a whole number. I'm going to zoom out again. You can zoom in and out while you're in this pattern creation mode. Now, if I want a background behind my pattern, I can do this now. I'm going to click here on Show Tile Edge so I can see where my single pattern element is. I'm reading off these values, 180 and 270. I'm going to create a rectangle. So I'm clicking on the rectangle tool. Click here and make my rectangle 180 by 270 and I'll click OK. Now, this needs to be moved behind everything. So I'll choose Object Arrange and Send to Back. You can see that this is breaking up the pattern right now. I just might choose a different color for it. So let's go and choose this color for it. And what I'm going to do is just move it until it doesn't break the pattern. So let's just move it until the pattern looks intact. It doesn't necessarily have to be placed over the tile edge, provided you can see all your pattern. That's all that needs to happen here. I'm a little concerned that this dot is the same color as the background. So while I'm here, I'm just going to select it and change its color. Might change it to this dark color. Now that I'm happy with everything, I'll just click done. I'll move these elements out of the way. You might notice that the dot here hasn't changed color in this element and that's as it should be when you create a pattern and make changes as you're creating the pattern, you're not actually changing the look of the starter elements. It's not the way that Illustrator works. Let's create a rectangle the size of the artboard. In my case, it's 1920 by 1080 and I'll just square it up on the artboard. With the fill selected, I'm going to the swatches panel and I'll click on my pattern. Now, if I'm not happy with the colors, that's an easy solution. I'm going up here to the recolor artwork dialog. I'll click advanced options and then I'll click edit. I can drag around here because at the moment the harmony colors are all linked. So if I drag around, I'm going to change every color in this pattern. If you go somewhere and you're not really happy with it, just click on reset. 
You can also unlink your Harmony colors and that allows you to change a color. Now I'm isolating this color in here because I wasn't really happy with it, but I do want to do something with it. So I'm just going to move it around here and I can also change its saturation and brightness. So I'm just changing this color here to improve its saturation and brightness. You can also relink the Harmony colors at this point and drag again so that these colors are all going to change in the same relationship to each other. You can also adjust here to darken the colors or brighten the colors. So there's plenty of ability to change your color scheme once you've actually created your pattern. If you see something you like, click OK. Here in the swatches panel, you notice that you've got the original pattern, the one that we created first off, and now this recolored version. So you haven't lost your original pattern. That's the way that changing colors in patterns works. In Adobe Illustrator, when you do it on an object that is filled with the pattern, you get multiple versions of the pattern. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.